Don't donate. Invest. Bhikse beda. Khudi ke maadi. Do you want to make India begging free? Then I will ask you all to stop donating. With all respect to my friends in philanthropy, I beg your attention to the point of view, to my point of view. Do you know how much ordinary Indians donate every year? According to Ben and Company's India Philanthropy Report 2022, it was 28,000 crore in 2021. CSR funds, HNIs, family trusts, foreign charities, they spent another 75,000 crore. The total private donations of India amounted to 1,3,000 crore. How much do we need to make India begging free? The data tabled in Lok Sabha by the government of India in 2019 puts the number of beggars at 4,13,670. To make India begging free, we need to invest 1.5 lakh per beggar, 5,000 towards verification, towards identification, verification and motivation, 15,000 towards relocation, 30,000 towards livelihood compensation for three months of training, and finally one lakh towards investment in his venture. Add together. Investing just 1% of India's current private donations for seven years, we can make begging free India a reality. Let me start from a tried and tested example. You must have heard of Professor Mohammad Yunus of Grameen Bank. In 2003, Grameen Bank started giving loans to beggars. Beggars purchased cookies, toys, sold while begging. Yunus mentioned in his 2006 Nobel speech that the Grameen Bank lent to 84,000 beggars with all the loans repaid and with more than 5,000 beggars having quit begging. Let us now come to India. The Beggars Corporation of Baranasi is doing the same but differently. We trained them to be skilled in a trade that matches their interest and abilities and turned them into entrepreneurs. Starting with one lady beggar in August 2021, we earned 5 lakh 54 thousand in the financial year 2022. With an investment of 10 thousand each from our 57 social investors, we earned a revenue worth 56 lakh 84 thousand in the financial year 2023. In February 2023, we repaid our social investors 11,650 against their 10,000 investment, 16.5% ROI in six months. All of them chose to reinvest. And in fact, three of our 57 social investors are from Karnataka. How did that happen? Did we just magically do this? Well, yes. If you see any magic in it, the magic lies in the hands of our beggar-turned-entrepreneurs and in their sales skills. I know you will laugh if I tell you that the beggars have a better sales skill than anyone of us sitting here. What do they sell you when you cough up a coin or two? Do they withdraw? If you ignore them, do they insult, throw stones at you? If you are rude to them, do they stop begging in summer, monsoon, winter? No. So what makes them 
so hard working consistent and determined the pangs of hunger that the children will starve if they don't take a coin from you more determined are the lady beggars who have mouths to feed yes i admit there are rackets begging racket drug peddling racket at the worst organ trade racket but do you believe the real beggars the helpless beggars can run this racket as i say it don't mind they are the victims of a begging trap with the kingpin being one of our white color neighbors i know you will then ask why don't they work and earn the reasons are simple but potent because they don't have self confidence they don't have faith in the society they don't have access to resources they don't have guidance and support between march and july 2021 not a single beggar came to work with us because they didn't have faith in us in august when one lady beggar somehow agreed to join us we created and sold our first batch of bags for a conference in a local hotel by november more beggars approached us and now 14 beggars are working with us 12 in our workshop two independently not a single beggar has left us since but what is unique in our model we are not master skill trainers we know everyone cannot do everything but everyone can do something and we just bring those some things together to build one big thing at beggars corporation we identify the manpower intensive sizable markets and its pain points and specifically if i am talking about the models that uniqueness in our model there is also another thing we don't give them loan like the gramin bank we don't give them grants or the charities what we offer to the beggars what our systems have failed to give them in 75 years of india's independence is aspiration the aspiration is that their children can go from streets to schools can talk in english like our children do can work with dignity and are not beg can finally get out of this begging trap if this is the model then how did we create that aspiration among them it cannot be trained we invested only 5000 to do this on 12th july 2021 that was the paper bag day we organized one painted dream competition among their children here you can see we awarded them complete school sets with bags and awards the certificates and this is when the wind of change started to blow but i know in the reality of life aspiration is not everything the biggest challenge is achievement that is sustainable at scale level we at beggars corporation identify the manpower intensive sizable markets which does not require complex skill sets for the beggars to fit in for example eco friendly shopping bags according to ccn it's a 10000 crore market and growing at the rate of 5.7% cgr spiritual items or puja samagri is another such market according to economic times it's a market worth 2.5 lakh crore according to statista the grocery home delivery market in india is at 1.5 lakh crore and growing all these are the fragmented markets which does not this specifically the field presence localized field presence is the key and having beggars everywhere 
from metros to marketplaces to temple towns, the Beggars Corporation has the advantage to turn this age-old problem into a possibility. These are the strengths and the opportunities I told you, but there are also weaknesses and the threats. We know beggars cannot compete in the market, in the cruel market competition. So we do complete hand-holding for them. Starting from market research, designing the product or service, training to production, marketing and management. We have a core team of experts with decades of experience in different domains like banking, e-commerce, retail, administration. But let me tell you from my experience, beggars have a very strong do or die spirit. Rejected by the family, by the relatives, by the society, they have nothing to lose. Once you give them a little bit of confidence and opportunity, they will never accept defeat. Let me cite an example here. During Savan Jalabhisak 2022, I met a lady beggar in front of the temple gate, the famous Kasi Vishwana temple, you know. I approached her, offered her 500 rupees, and told her, instead of begging to bring flowers and sell, she was reluctant. I convinced her somehow. But next day I saw, she was again begging. I approached her. She came to me, gave me back my 500. I said, no. I will take flowers only from you. If you don't give me the flowers, I will go to the temple empty-handed. She was afraid that the God will be angry. Next day she brought flowers only for me. I picked up a handful of flowers and told her to sell the rest. I took another risk. We handed over our mobile phones, our helmet to her and told her to give us back when we returned from the temple. My colleague was apprehensive, so was I. I trusted my instinct. After one hour, when we returned from the temple, I marked she was sitting on the other side of the road and staring at the temple gate. She came, run, she came running to us, gave us back our mobile phones, our helmet and 240 rupees. That was the amount. She earned just in one hour by selling flowers, not begging. I told her, I will take my money back, definitely. I am, I am not giving you a donation. But on the last day, I will take my 500 and 100 rupees profit. Next day, I saw her sitting in front of the temple booking office and selling flowers. On the last day, she showed me how much she had earned, 8,300 rupees. She was now confident, happy, and she promised herself voluntarily that she won't beg again. She offered me 5,000 rupees. I had given her 500, she offered me 5,000 rupees. I accepted 1,000 from her. After three, four days, I roped in another social investor for her and 10,000 in her business. It has been nine months since then. She's not begging. She's running her business and known in the area as the Phulwali auntie. Another child beggar, you can see him here, Bishal. She begs at the ghat taking the Bhagavan Sankar avatar. The German ambassador took one selfie with him. He was the Protagonist of poverty there in, there in the ghats. The German ambassador took one selfie with him and it went viral. Now he studies in our school of life. Today he tells me that he will go to America for higher studies. Come back and take over the responsibilities at Beggars Corporation for me to rest. This is the, this is the real time impact of beggars corporation so far. 
I know we are just beginning. But we have created the biggest impact that is hope. This hope today can be the game changing reality tomorrow when the society gets involved. The employernomics of Beggars Corporation can create a socio-economic re-evolution of the poorest of the poor. Begging Free India can be the symbol of true economic democracy where the poor can be both creator and owner of wealth. For this to happen, for the most neglected and hated among us to find trust in us, to find trust in the society, we must not only depend on the government or on the God to take another of that. Why can't we be the change we want to see? Why can't we be the good Samaritans? Investing in beggars will directly impact a much bigger problem in India. That is unemployment. India does not have any employment policy yet. Beggars Corporation is the laboratory of human resource-based economy, humanomics. Because if the beggars can be entrepreneurs, just imagine, if the beggars can be entrepreneurs, how can the educated youth be unemployed? Think of it. Thank you.